So the big question, um, are property prices going to continue rising in 2021 or is the market going to crash? I'm answering this question two or three times a day at the moment, um, people are asking. So uh, before I continue, if you want to hear more um, or, and you want these e uh, videos directly uh, you know, notified to you, remember to subscribe, give us a I can't remember if it's a like or a thumbs up on YouTube. Whatever it is, do that. It helps us. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, seriously, if you if you want to uh, hear more of this, subscribe and the, the videos keep coming through. Um, so, on to the answer. Um, some people are worried about this. Some people are excited about it. I have to say most people are excited about it. They, they're sort of smelling an opportunity, maybe. Um, some people think they're going to lose money and some people think they're probably more... more maybe it's a... Uh, the kind of people I talk to, but they think that there's some money to be made. So um, I agree with them. Uh, I've been here before, sort of 2008, 2010. It was some of the best property buying we've done and quite a lot of the markers, the indicators seem remarkably similar. Um, I do think, you know, both those people that are worried and excited, they could both be right. It depends how you play this. Um, the good news is we're not trying to time a market. And I say that's good news because it's impossible. Um, I have been um, copying, pasting, comment from news articles for the last month or so. Um, I knew this video was coming and I just thought, just, just to give some, some flavor, you'll have been seeing, the, if you've been reading the news, I don't read much news, but if you've been reading the news, you'll be seeing the same articles. And it's interesting when you actually look at what it is and put it all in a, I put it on a, not, not, not a spreadsheet, put it, put it on a form here. Um, each article I've got, I've got a reference to it, but it, you know, quantitative easing, will it be too much or will it be enough? Um, there was a very mixed picture painted on about four or five different articles on that. Also on inflation, you know, there was also, you know, it, what's going to happen with inflation, this or this. And some people said this or this, and they thought that was good or bad or good or bad. And, you know, contradictory, com completely contradictory. Um, end of furlough, or is furlough going to be extended? The same with lockdown. Is it going to get tighter? Is it going to get eased? Or how quickly is it going to be eased? Uh, There's about 10 different articles on that. You know, I stopped counting after that. Uh, Brexit, it's un pretty unclear, actually, what's, what's maybe going to happen with Brexit. It's happened. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lack of... It's almost like everything's frozen. You know, there's not a lot of stuff going on anyway because everything's you know locked down and tightened so you can't really see what's going to happen with that is it people making a fuss about the the the, uh, the border controls or is it a real problem uh the stamp duty holiday I'm talking specifically about the property market what's happening with that or is it going to be extended um uh, people moving you know are, are people going to want to move you know everything's locked down is anybody even going to be thinking well, i'm going to stay where i am or are they being forced to move i read a uh a, an article about a British Airways pilot who's now driving a Tesco's van. Um, but also, one thought that I thought was, surely he's going to get his job back in six to 12 months. Yeah, he's a pilot, he's well trained, and surely the, fly, the planes will be flying again soon. So, you know, you've got two sides of that story. At the end of the high street, um, but then also the rise of some new, more modern, more efficient business models uh, that are stronger, more efficient, you know. Um, households and how they're coping. Um, you know, lots of them under lots of pressure and then equally lots of them even whilst on furlough making savings and the, uh, the, 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 the piece the article there said yeah, savings had gone up um, all of those opinions I got from you know, let's call them experts and every single one of those opinions had a, had a diametrically opposed opinion and both of them are looking at each other saying I'm right and only one of them could be um, so I think the only fact you can take from that is things are uncertain. And for me, as a property investor, that's really good. I've got a prop and um, I printed out house price growth. It's 1952. Check that's right. Yeah, 1952 to uh, 20, I think it goes into 2021. I, I go to 2020, it's not quite got 2021's figures on there. I get that from the Nationwide. Um, there's loads of different places you can get it from. I like the Nationwide one because they do it in an easy downloadable format. Um, we're not trying to time that market. As a landlord, as a, as a property investor, we're not trying to time this market. And that's really good news because 
you can't. Um, let me see if I can I can trace that line. You know, it's a relentlessly upward line, but it's got some blips. We're not trying to buy at the, the, at the trough and get out at the peak. We're not trying to avoid this. I'm just getting on as far to this side as I can and staying on up here somewhere. One of the interesting things for me is, you know, that's a clear um, you know, blip there and blip here. There's a blip there, there's a blip there, and there's a blip there. And you can't see them because as a long-term investor, as the scale moves out, you're focused on this stuff for sure, but this stuff recedes in the past. And this scale was written for 2021. It wasn't written for 1960. And the thickness of the line there is more than the value of a house. And that shows you something. So get into this with a, a long-term mindset. But let's just be really clear, and this is the markers I'm talking about. We're not trying to time the market, and that's not the market we are buying in. Never buy in the retail market. We buy a house for less than it's worth, and we make it worth more. We add value. Always, always be doing that. I, uh, I recorded a video series. It's called How to Build a Buy to Let Empire, and that is the key component. That is the rocket fuel that will help you build a property portfolio. Never pay, pay market price for a property, always buy a property that you can add value to. We're buying below this line and we're buying, we're, we're, we're bringing it above that line. Only percentage terms, obviously that's an average. So buy a cheap house, add value, and then we've got some equity that we can release and we can keep buying and keep buying. And the reason I'm saying it's good that there is uncertainty is what's gonna allow you to buy those properties um, the cheap properties and have your offers accepted is that uncertainty so rather than what the market's doing you can be buying whether the market's going down up or sideways the truth is it doesn't actually move that quick ever um, you know, market you know, can, can stocks and shares lose half their value in an afternoon of course they can can properties lose half their value in even half the value never, but how long would it take for them to lose 15%, let's say, a year? Um, and we're not looking for those properties anyway. We're looking for the slightly distressed properties where we can come in and we can help, we can fix some problems and solve some problems. So uh, I think these market conditions can be your friend. Um, now is the time, like I say, those market indicators, now's the time to buy. So get out there, um, start doing the viewings and you'll, unearth those uh, th th those gems uh, if you haven't got the time the skill or the inclination uh, perhaps look us up you know um, we keep keep watching these videos have a look around the YouTube channel um, but also um, you can go to our website forthelandlords.com there's a bit more information on there you can book on a discovery call or and I'll put the email address in the um, description here discovery at forthelandlords.com email into there and we'll send you an email back to book you wanted to a discovery call to talk about any of these um, uh, things that we talk about uh, in, in more depth. So get out there, happy hunting, and maybe I'll see some of you on a discovery call shortly. Bye for now.